Tom here from Learn Systems, and one of the challenges in technology is keeping up with the ever-changing landscape of technology. And that comes down to reading lots of news sites, and people ask, what sites do you read? And let's get more specific about how I read those sites. So if you just want to know what sites I read, hey, I've left a link down to a forum post where I have my list. But I don't read them natively on their sites because the algorithms are dominating them to try to push you towards clicking all the fancy shiny things on the site to sell more ads. And that can be a distraction from what you came there to do. And this is where an RSS reader comes in. Specifically today, we're going to talk about fresh RSS because it's my favorite RSS reader. I started using it last year and I just can't say enough good things about how much better I am at organizing the news. I've used RSS readers in the past and I've kind of got away from them. And I really made a commitment to stop going to and stop getting distracted by all these different sites and consolidate all these RSS feeds. But it's more than RSS feeds. It'll actually do RSS, Atom, OPML, HTML plus XPath web scraping. It'll even pull in YouTube feeds and it's mobile friendly. So this is a pretty cool open source self hosted, by the way, application you can use to curate and minimize the distractions of all the different news articles that you want to keep up with. So let's jump over and talk about it. And speaking of distractions, that running in the background happens to be a little Linux utility called Hollywood. I think it's always fun. It's always a good conversation starter, and it's easy to see how easily people are distracted. So that's why I threw it up there for a discussion and topic. But leave your comments and what you think of it down below. Let's start here at the manual. Don't worry, I won't read it all to you, but I want to talk about some of the features because maybe there's features in here that I don't use, but may be interesting to you. So RSS and Atom aggregation, mark article as favorite if you liked it and we want to read it later. I do use that feature. Filter and search functionality helps easily find articles. Now this is not full regex filtering that you can do, but you can say, I want to find articles of a certain title across all the news sites that I've aggregated in here. So that's pretty cool. Uh, statistics. Neat if you're curious just how often articles have been posted and some of the publishing frequency of the websites you feed in there. Uh, import, export, themes available, extensions by the community, Google Reader like API to connect Android applications. I don't use this, but I think it's kind of neat, but the interface itself is mobile friendly. So I just view it on my phone logged in. So not a problem there. Uh, the application is responsive, which means small screens, no problem, as I said there. And one of the other things is neat is not only is this self-hosted and free, but you actually have the ability to create an RSS feed out of all your aggregated RSS feeds. So if you wanted to pipe this in back to the API Lake Connect option, you could actually feed this somewhere else as well. Now they have documentation on it, administration and getting it set up. There's a couple different ways to set it up. I happen to run it in a Docker. They do not have their own official Docker images, but the folks at linuxserver.io do maintain this. This was updated just two days ago. They have installs for, for through Docker CLI or through Docker Compose. And also I'm using it myself because TrueCharts has a version of it. And I just use the host path option. I had mentioned this the other day in my video. So you can load this up through TrueCharts. You just point it to the host path that you would like, and all of your data is saved right there. So if you have to rebuild the application, you just point it right back at this and it sets up again, makes it easy to back up and restore on another NAS if that was something I needed to do. All right, let's take a look at the Fresh RSS interface. Right now it says I have no articles. We can try to refresh to see if there's any more. There's no feeds to refresh because they're all refreshed. This shows me the show unread, and this would be show read articles. And we can click these. And for example, if I had some unread articles, I could filter for only read, only unread, or maybe I should say only articles that I've put a star on or only ones I haven't put a star on as in made it my favorite. We also have this as a bookmark option to show articles based on a query. So this would find any articles where in title equals Chrome and instantly find those. So I can go back to even right here on August 18th of 2022, Google patches a Chrome zero day. So this is from threat post. I can look at this article, have some of the data from it, go right to the article as needed and be able to see that an insufficient flaw input flaw one of 11 patch and update this week. Now, these are ways you can easily find if you're looking for something or a company name and have they appeared in the news before. This is one of the reasons I keep so much of this news. So when something happens currently, I can also go back historically and say, was this company in there before? And of course, if I change this to last pass, there's been a few articles about last pass dating back to December that are in here about them. Now, as far as customization goes, you have these global options for display, for reading, for archiving, 
and even for sharing. So if we go here to the sharing, for example, I have it so I can share to Twitter or share to LinkedIn. And if you want to add another sharing option, maybe I should put it in for Mastodon. I can hit the plus and put the share name display, share URL to use, hit submit. And now that would be on the sharing options. Where those sharing options show up is when you click on any one particular article. We have the share option here. Twitter and LinkedIn is primarily where I share things, but you can customize those as needed. Back over to our main stream here. Anytime you're managing the news feeds, we go to subscription management and we'll look at like Bleeping Computer. I'm just putting their feed. It's bleepingcomputer.com slash feed. Pretty simple. And when you added this, I can customize and override any of these defaults if I have a specific setting I want for any of the customizations for any input source I have for RSS or web scraping, et cetera, because it can also do HTML plus XPath web scraping. Now let's cancel this and look at something like the YouTube. So if we go down here to things I have for YouTube and I have like Lawrence Systems in here, we can go and customize that one and we can see Lawrence Systems. It's got the channel ID. And if you look, it's got the full feed URL, but you don't have to know the feed URL. This is not anything you have to have any knowledge of when you're doing this. Matter of fact, when we'll go back over here and we just want to add something new to the feed, drop in the feed URL. So my youtube.com slash at Lawrence Systems. I'm going to put that in YouTube category. I already added it, so it won't let me add it again because it'll give it an error. But it will do the smart thing and figure out that feed. It takes this input and converts it. It does the same thing for bleeping a Peter by just putting it slash feed. It understands and looks and goes, okay, I found the RSS in here and I can pull that information and then aggregate it together. Now for each of these feeds, whether it's new sites, you decide on each of them part right here. We'll say manage whether or not you want these in the mainstream by default. So I can have where I only show in a category or show in the mainstream. The advantage to doing that is some things I don't want in my mainstream because that would be too much data. But specifically with Reddit, for example, I have home lab subreddits, Linux subreddits, and support subreddits. I don't always want these in my main, but when I have the time, I go through and see what things I haven't looked at that belong to these particular multi-reddits. And if we click on these and go to the manage these feeds, you'll see that there's simply reddit.com slash user Lawrence system slash m support and m support.rss. This is all you need. And these are going to be linked down below in a forum post where if you want to see what multi-reddits I have public facing and grouped, so you can just pull these feeds in as well. This allows me to pull them in and curate what I call my support subreddits and my Linux subreddits and my home lab subreddits. What this also allows you to do is as you add to these multi-reddits and I put different things within them, such as XCPNG, Ubiquity, TrueNAS, PFSense, PFBlocker, Bitwarden. If I add another one of these in here to what I refer to as support subreddits, basically they're topics I discuss and then I look for comments and interact with people in these forums. This allows me to, without updating fresh RSS, I just update these particular feeds. And speaking of Reddit, your main page for Reddit, reddit.com slash press slash RSS, you can get your own private listing feed. Now, this is not something I include to the public, but this is all my main Reddits that I subscribe to curated. And as I change those, once again, they're fed into fresh RSS because the RSS feed is always your current subscriptions. You can also get more data in there if you want, like any time someone mentions you on Reddit, uh, self post replies only, comment replies, et cetera, and pull those into fresh RSS as well. Having all this data in one place makes it really convenient. And one last part I'll talk about here is the social media. I'm actually testing this out where you go and will manage this feed. There's a free service right now. I say right now because Twitter's a dynamic, ever moving target, but it's called Knitter, N-I-T-T-E-R dot net. And with Knitter, you're actually able to feed things from Twitter as an RSS. So by doing this and saying, Look for tweets for Tom Lawrence Tech, my public name. And because my tweets are public, you actually are able to pull these in and get a list of the things I've tweeted without subscribing or having to log into Twitter. This is currently a service that has not been affected by changes at Twitter. So you're still able to pull certain people in there. And it's nice if you just want to go, I want to see a feed from a certain person, but I don't want to deal with going to Twitter where I see lots of dumb things that will distract me. Doing this level of aggregation just really helps keep you focused.
which is a challenging goal. Curating all the data around us into something that's more concise so I can look at it, examine it, learn about new things, but also cut out all the extras that might be distracting me on there. Someone probably pointed out, but Tom, don't you have a curated list of memes? I do have a guilty pleasure of looking at silly things on the internet that are curated on Reddit. So uh, that is my thing that I will not put into my fresh RSS. Fresh RSS keeps me focused. My meme list does not go in there because that's where I get distracted. But by not going to the main page of Reddit, I can pretend it's not there while I'm working and trying to aggregate data. Nonetheless, let me know what you think of Fresh RSS. Leave some comments down below what you like, what you don't like. If you have an RSS reader you like even more, uh, maybe I'm wrong about Fresh RSS, about it being the best one, because it's only the best one that I know about today. One of you could leave a comment and I could learn about one that's even better, and maybe I'll be reviewing that one at a later date and aggregating all the data. But for now, this one's open source. It's easy to host. It's easy to set up. It's got so many great features on it. And I especially like the YouTube one because, you know, please like and subscribe and click that bell icon to get noticed of things. And go ahead and throw your favorite creators URL right into Fresh RSS and then have a nice list of all your YouTube creators and when they come out with new videos and don't have to be reliant on only YouTube's algorithm that sometimes notifies you that you liked my content. So nonetheless, love hearing from you. Head on my forums for a more in-depth discussion on this and other topics. Thanks.